So I guess this is a perfect uh, day to film one of these episodes. Welcome to World War III. There's World War III going on all right with the shooting that happened yesterday in Buffalo. There are so many different things to talk about. One thing I will not be talking about will be the racial side of it as a white person discussing, you know, race and things like that. It is a complete lose-lose situation. Uh, the only thing I'll say about that, and I'll say it very vaguely when it comes to how these things are covered, it's very interesting because, you know, yesterday we learn there's been a mass shooting, absolutely horrible, terrible tragedy. Uh, and the first two things I thought of is what are the race of the shooter and did anyone die? Because those two things will determine how the media covers these events. The recent uh, shooting in Brooklyn, the answer to those two questions were the shooter was an African American and nobody died. So it got barely any media coverage as opposed to this one, basically an orgasm for the media. It is a white male who is a complete racist according to his you know, little manifesto or whatever, and he did target a black area and 10 people died. It's very important to the media, especially when it comes to restricting the Second Amendment. It's very important that people die because they really want to play on people's emotions and the whole idea of getting citizens to give up their rights is that the citizens do it voluntarily. Okay, and it's the idea of, do you want to be a good person? Why do we have ARs on the street? Do you want to be a good person? People are dying. You're causing it by supporting the Second Amendment. Uh, and again, guys, I am not going to talk about the race side of it. I'm staying out of it. I there, It's a lose-lose situation. Complete lose-lose. This kid was clearly a racist, or at least that's what it looks like. I mean, you know, I understand. It's a lose-lose for me to talk about it. I just want to talk about how they swing it into, you know, ban the Second Amendment. The, the Second Amendment is horrible. Ban guns, ban assault rifles. And I think I'm going to title this video, they're not going to ban guns by banning guns. And what I mean by that is all of these people that want the Second Amendment banned, that want guns banned, they want an Australia type situation. They're not going to go tomorrow and say all guns must be out of citizens' hands. We need a complete gun ban. They will not do that. This is I've said this before. It is a multi, 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 multi-step process to ban all guns. I'm not saying everyone wants to do it. A lot of Democrats just want gun reform in, for, in, in terms of taking assault weapon, assault rifle, rifles off the streets. They want stricter background checks. Apparently, there was a report from the Associated Press that this kid threatened a school and he was put into a mental facility. The problem is, you know, these type of people, if they want to get guns bad enough, they will get guns bad enough. And I think what will happen is if you ban the assault rifles and we see, you know, a significant decrease in gun overall gun violence, uh, those same people that wanted just the assault rifles banned, because guys, right now, a lot of them know they can't ban all the guns, so they're saying, we just want the assault rifles banned. But when the assault rifles get banned, they start using it as propaganda and say, look at how peaceful it is, all the shootings are down. They reference Australia and their gun violence, which is literally the worst thing to possibly reference, because in you know, as a direct result to Australia, disarming their citizens they've got way more control over them and we saw the scary things that happened during the pandemic i've said this before guns are like a checks and balances be between the citizens and the government it doesn't let the government get too powerful if you have an armed general population uh so that's what i think on that but overall guys this whole idea of banning done guns the, the what i'm trying to explain it's a multi-step process it doesn't happen overnight there once the assault if they do end up banning assault weapons at some point you know not saying they're going to or anything this is just me speculating if they do at some point and then they say look at the shootings they're all down now we need to ban pistols because everyone's going to start using pistols if the assault weapons get banned now we need to ban pistols 
it keeps going and going and going. You don't say, listen, we're going to ban all the guns. You say, we're going to ban the assault rifles. Then when there's no shootings with assault rifles, everyone turns to pistols. Then the pistols become, become a problem. It's a cycle, guys. This is exactly what gets done. Again, I'm not accusing all, you know, people who want some reform of the Second Amendment, some sort of stricter gun laws as thinking like this, but this is the way you would think if you wanted guns to be completely eliminated from the citizens. This is the way you would do it. Um, you know, so we can talk about stricter background tr uh, checks, you know, ARs, what, you know, should citizens own those type of guns, but overall, you know, when it comes to a total gun ban, this is the first step. You don't go, people think if you want a gun ban, you go and say, I want all guns gone. With America, you would never be able to do that. So you start with propaganda. You say, look at all those dead people. You play to their emotions. And the key is always when you're trying to take away citizens' rights, the key is to have these citizens voluntarily give up their rights, like during the pandemic. Nobody knew what the pandemic was. Nobody knew how deadly it was. So citizens, because for the greater good, they said, we're fine. Shut all the small businesses down. They can all go out of business. We'll stay at home. We won't work. We won't get paid. We will sacrifice. We will have our rights fringed upon to try and keep everybody safe. The way to get people to give up their rights, it's a voluntary, voluntarily thing that's done. That's why it's so important when these shootings happen, they want to play to your emotions. They want to say, do you want more dead kids? Do you want more dead people? Nobody wants that. But this, you are simplifying an extremely complicated issue when you take one situation, one shooting, even two, three, four shootings, it's an extremely uh, you know, small uh, situation and you're magnifying it and you're saying this is why this is bad and this is why we need to change and affect so many different Americans' overall way of life and their overall rights. Um, you know, it's just so much more complicated than just saying, oh, if all we have to do, we want a great society, we just ban the guns. You know, it's so much more complicated than that. It's a tre checks and balances. We never want the government to get too powerful. And, you know, these shootings are horrible. They're terrible. Nobody wants to see it. Uh, but the, the, the craziest thing about all of these shootings, it, again, it's very similar to January 6th. I've, I've said this, I'll say it again. Democrats loved January 6th. It gave them tremendous political leverage. If you cannot see that, you are not thinking politically. January 6th enabled Democrats to ban Donald Trump off of all major social media, saying he incited the violence. That's why they talk about it like it's worse than 9-11, because it's such a positive thing that happened for them, which enabled them to ban Donald Trump. If you want to do something radical, you need a reason to do it. And that's whole, the whole idea of disinformation and where that whole thing started. It's like, you don't have to think for yourself. Let Joe Biden and his disinformation task force think for you. And he'll label what's disinformation and what's not. It is completely insane. And they these school shootings are the gateway. They are the enabler to enact stricter gun laws. And again... I'm open to the idea of having stricter background checks. I don't think, like, if we actually did a thought experiment, a thought experiment and said, okay, if we have stricter background checks, would that stop this 18-year-old kid from acquiring an AR? Would that stop it? Would it? Like, legitimately, we we're going to have to have conversations like that because people are just like, oh, we just need stricter checks. I think this kid could still get guns. Now, if you made them really strict and you made it a multi-week thing you had to pass multiple tests and things like that with like a clean record we can talk about that the problem is a lot of people are scared and i'm trying to show you guys if they're gonna ban guns they don't start off by banning guns like overall guns they say listen ban the assault weapons make stricter background checks and then when the shootings inevitably go down not counting not understanding all the other things that go with it 
they will use that as propaganda and say, well, there's no more AR shootings because we banned them, just like what happened in Australia. But you know what? Now the pistol shootings are go going up. Obviously, they would because pistols would only be, be the only firearm. And then they say, you know what? We want a, just a an out complete outright ban banned on all uh, guns. And that is the situation currently. So this is a horrible, horrible tragedy, unfortunately. Again, when you see like the initial reports that there's been a mass shooting, the first two things I think of on whether or not the media is going to cover this, what is the race of the shooter is, you know, unfortunately, that's something you have to think about as well as uh, how many people died, if any at all. I, you know, I never hope people die, but I'm saying they need people to die because they want to play to your emotions and the idea of citizens giving up their rights, like the rights to bear arms, uh, that revolves around the citizens voluntarily doing it. You've got to voluntarily, they can't, if they try and take that right, if the government tries to take it, that would be a mess. And they know that will never fly. So they want to kind of tell the citizens, do you want to be a good person? You need to give up the rights. Like during the pandemic, you're going to have to make sacrifices. We didn't know this pandemic was coming. Small businesses are going to go out of business. You're going to have to stay at home for six months or whatever. And, it, you know, it's very interesting to see how different states handled the pandemic based on the political party of their governor. Isn't that is just crazy, guys? Just a crazy situation there. But just quickly wanted to discuss this shooting, really just more on a Second Amendment level, not nothing with race, nothing like that. And, you know, talk about how something like that would be done because a lot of people don't really understand uh, this is, is a very, very complicated situation and one thing leads to the next and you ba ban the ARs and then there's no AR shootings, but then the pistol shootings go up and, you know, a, a mass shooting happens with a pistol and then you got to ban the pistols and things like that. So, um, it is a never ending cycle and, and we just hope these shootings don't happen. The kid, you know, obviously major issues. He had major issues. I'm sure things like that. Don't really want to talk about it too much. You don't like highlighting the shooters in this scenario uh, because you don't want copycats. But guys, just wanted to discuss that. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.